Hello my friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Annabella. Today is Wednesday and I want to talk about just one book. It is Anna Donoghue's new book, Learned by Heart. And this book is about the early years of Anne Lister, but told through the eyes or through the persona of uh, Eliza Rain. Now, before I get into the book, I will talk a little bit of about Anne Lister, because you have to know who she is. Most of you probably know Anne Lister, or have heard about her uh, the last couple of years. If you don't, I will help you through this. So Anne Lister lived uh, during the early 19th century in Shipton Hall, uh, which is uh, West Yorkshire, I believe. And uh, she's a phenomenal woman. She's larger than life. So she has a mind of her own. She is extremely independent. She is a traveler, an explorer. She is um, a mountaineer. I believe she was one, uh, she has conquered a couple of mountains not only as the first woman, but as the first person. As the first person. She is or was an entrepreneur. She owned a couple of coal mines. She owned a casino. She owned um, a vast estate. She... Uh, what else did she do? She's a polymath. Um, she was fluent in French. She um, <laughs> did some autopsies, autopsies and stuff like that. Uh, she studied medicine, but she wasn't allowed into the um, university as a woman. So she paid for private lessons with the most famous doctors in France. She was a hiker, a very, very fierce hiker. She did everything she wanted to do. She was also a diarist. She wrote about 20,000 pages containing 5 million words one third of which were written in a special code that she developed herself. It took a very long time to break the code even. Anyway, why did she write in code? Well, in code she wrote about her private life and all her escapades with other ladies. And she really thought as a man of standing in that time. So she was an opportunist. She wanted, her dream was to marry a woman that she loved, but also a woman of standing, not a low class woman. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she did. Now, at the beginning, uh, the first relationship she had was with Eliza Rain. Eliza Rain was um, uh, an orphan. Um, she, her father was uh, an Englishman and her mother was, I believe, an Indian princess. So she had a mixed color, but she was sent to um, a private school in England. Um, because her parents died and there she could get a, a good upbringing. Now, who was sent there to? And Lister. She was 14, 15 and Eliza Rain was about the same age. Now, later on, she meets through um, Eliza Rain, her best friend for a very long time, Tip. And Tip was a bit of a manly woman, a bit of a butch. And she, yeah, with her, she had a lot of fun too. And then through Tip, then she meets uh, Marianne Lawton. And that was her big love. That was the love of her life. That was the woman she really wanted to marry. 
That didn't happen. Uh, Marianne Lawton had to marry an older man and uh, it broke Anne Lister's heart. And then they continued having uh, a distant relationship. They saw each other a couple of times a year, which were very passionate years, but still um, Anne Lister was very lonely. She met other women and then finally, Towards the end of her life, she meets a very wealthy woman who lived next to her, and that's Anne Walker. Now, about that relationship, there's a very well-known BBC series and also a BBC movie. The BBC series of two seasons is Gentleman Jack, and the BBC movie is Port, uh, the Secret Diaries of Anne Lister. Anne Lister died at the age of 49 in Georgia, where Jim lives, not in the American state, of a high fever. They don't really know what she had. People say it was a tick. Um, others say it was a sort of uh, plague kind of uh, illness, and she passed away there. And and Walker had to travel with her back to Britain, which took her six months. With Anne Walker, she also married. Not officially, but she did. There were, uh, she was wearing a wedding ring and everything. Not an easy relationship by any means. They loved each other, but it wasn't a perfect relationship. But I think with Anne Lister, it's always difficult to have a perfect relationship anyways. Anyway, we go back. We go back to Eliza Rain. Now, what is known about Eliza Rain is that after they went to school together, Eliza Rain also spent a couple of summers there, a couple of holidays at Chipton Hall, which um, and that was very, very rare. And Lister inherited from her uncle. And um, Anne Walker was also a woman who um, inherited a lot of money, uh, which is normally unheard of, but uh, those were two uh, anomalies. And yeah, they could, they were rich enough to live the life they wanted to live more or less. I forgot to mention that Eliza Rain struggled with mental illness and she lived for most of her life in an institution. And Lister visited her every year, at least once or twice, for the rest of her life till she died. Anyway, we go back to the book. So Emma Donahue is fascinated, was fascinated by Anne Lister for a very long time, and she was fascinated by her, and then she did a lot, a lot, a lot of research uh, towards the early years, so when uh, Anne Lister was at school, and then her relationship with Eliza Rain, she also visited the, the school, where there is still, yeah, how you call it, tags and um, graffiti made by Anne Lister and Eliza Rain. And um, so she wrote everything down and she put it in the book. Now, I was very, very motivated to read this book. I read this yesterday in one go. It's about... 325 pages and I understand Emma Donahue but she in her all her enthusiasm and in all her research and in all her love and admiration for Anne Lister she forgot a bit to show us the characters of the two young women, two young girls, um, they were kind of flat. And it is a good read. It's a good read, but it's not a wow read. So we learn a lot about uh, how life was at that time, 
they went to the races and then there was a, a race uh, with uh, one female racer and she was sabotaged and everything. And, uh, so she spent a lot of time, that's um, Vita that you hear. Um, so she spends a lot of time talking about that. She spends also a lot of time about uh, talking about the day-to-day of life at a school. Uh, a relatively small school. There were, I think there were only 40 students. But she forgot a bit to, to give, uh, to color in Anne Lister and Eliza, Eliza Range. She forgot to give them a bit more oomph, a bit more character. Uh, she forgot to make it a little more of a clash, a clash of culture, a clash of personalities uh, that makes it interesting for us to read. You know, you can you can stick to what really happened and but give it more color, give it uh, make it richer and add flavor and add some uh, chili sauce and some uh, I don't know uh, Lime and, and uh, yeah, some crunch. It has to be, yeah, it lacked a bit of everything. It lacked a bit of life. And I didn't feel Anne Lister coming to life, although she was a woman that was larger than life, even in her early years. She was uh, known to shoot at people who uh, were stealing their chickens and stuff like that. So you could add stuff like that to give it more color, more flavor, uh, more, yeah, more panache. And I, at the end, I was a bit let down by this book. And although she can be a wonderful, wonderful writer, for me, it's a hit and miss, always with Anne Mel Donahue. And for me, it's not really a miss, but it's a um, net, neat book. So what, what did I mean by a, a just nearly their book? Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm saddened that I have to say this. Um, is it a book that you would buy if you buy everything of Emma Donahue? Then surely buy it. This is more a borrowed book. If you have never read anything about Anne Lister, maybe this is a good entry book. Um, but she is, although I know that when you're a child and when you're 14, 15, your, your persona is not really developed, but still this... I was more edgy than, than uh, Lister was um, in this book. So um, it's a bit of a miss. I'm sorry. I really am sorry. There's nothing bad to say about the book. I really, it, it, it is. It, it's well written, but it just lacks the, the chili sauce. The oomph. The mmm. So, yeah. Sorry to disappoint you. I'm pretty sure that there will be people that will uh, be disappointed in what I say, and um, I will see that in the comments. But um, yeah, I am not the person that will say something is great because I love the topic or because I love the author. A book has to be great because I love it. And I didn't love it. I liked it. But it didn't blow me away. It didn't blow me away. I am sorry. So yeah, Emma Donahue, learn by heart. Too much info. Too much research. I'm really, really wanting to show it. Ah, the classical mistake. Talk to you later. Thank you for watching. Have you read this book? Will you read this book? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and bye-bye. Uh,